In this lesson, we're going to have a look at how timelines can help us with changing interest rates. As soon as a specific amount receives interest, its value will change over time. We know that we can use our interest formulas to add the interest and calculate the new value. For now, we are going to focus only on compound interest. In some problems, there will be a change in interest rate and there can be more than one amount either deposited or withdrawn from the account. And to help you make sense of all of this, a timeline is needed. A timeline starts when no time has passed and we indicate that with T0. And then it can be broken up into any type of period depending on the question. And then time passes on this timeline in terms of that specific period. The value of the account or the value of the original amount as it accumulated interest can then be determined at any point on this timeline. If we know the starting value of the account, we can determine the value of the account at any point on the timeline by adding the interest for the time that has passed. To do this, we are going to use our compound interest formula with a positive exponent for the positive period that has gone by. If we, however, know the value of the account later on in the timeline, we can move backwards on the timeline and determine the value of the account at an earlier stage. And this will be done by removing all the interest that has accumulated or by dividing away the interest. Because if we think about our formula, to get the p-value, we will take our a-value and divide by the bracket. And this can, of course, be rewritten with a negative exponent. So in short, you can always remember that to move forward on your timeline, you will always use a positive exponent and to move backwards, a negative exponent. The interest rate that an account receives can change over time. Example 1. Sean deposits 15,000 Rand into a bank account and leaves it in the account for five years. For the first three years, interest is calculated at 8% per annum compounded monthly. Thereafter, the interest rate changes to 9% per annum compounded quarterly. How much money will he have in this account at the end of the five years? Because there are changes in this account over the five years, it helps if you represent it on a timeline. I'm going to choose to work with a timeline in years because we have years, months and quarters. So my timeline consists of five years. Here we were given that Sean deposits or starts with 15,000 Rand and for the first three years there's a fixed interest rate and after that it changes. For the first three years, the interest rate is calculated monthly. So my period for the first three years will be in months and three years worth of months will be 36 months. The interest rate is 8%, which I then also still have to rewrite in terms of months. So I'll have to divide by 12. After this, the interest rate changes to 9% that is compounded quarterly. So for the next two years, from year three to year five, the interest rate will be determined quarterly, and that means two years worth of quarters, and two times four is eight quarters. Here, the interest rate is 9%, that is compounded quarterly, so I still have to divide it by four. And now I can take my compound interest formula and substitute. My starting value is 15,000 Rand and this amount receives interest of 8% monthly for the first three years meaning 36 months and now this whole amount forms my starting value at term 3 and when I want to add the interest for the next period I simply multiply it to this value and my new interest rate is then 9% paid quarterly for eight quarters. You can put this into your calculator exactly like that and then you will see that the value of this account is 
765 Rand and 78 cents. This is definitely the quickest way to get to the answer. If you prefer, you can start with your starting value and determine what it will be worth after three years with the first interest rate. And then in a new calculation, you can take that value and add the next two years of interest to get to the final amount. Example two, Mia invests a certain amount for six years at 16% per annum compounded quarterly for the first two years and 15% per annum compounded monthly for the remaining time. At the end of the six years, the investment is worth 20,000 Rand. How much did she invest originally? This time we do not know what the amount is that was invested, but we do know that it was invested for six years. The interest rate for this time is broken into two parts and the first interest rate is for the first two years. This interest rate is compounded quarterly. So again, we have two years worth of quarters, which will be eight quarters. The interest rate for this period is 16%. That is calculated or compounded quarterly. After two years, the interest rate changes to 15% compounded monthly for the remaining time. So for the remaining four years, the interest rate is compounded monthly, so four years worth of months will be 48 months. Here the interest rate is 15% compounded monthly, so we divide by 12. Here we were given that at the end of the period the investment was worth 20,000 Rand. And we now need to take this amount back to the start to determine how much was originally invested. I mentioned earlier that when we work backwards on our timeline, we will work with a negative exponent. This is because the interest that accumulated over the past six years now has to be removed again. So my final amount was 20,000 Rand. And if I work backwards, it first goes through the 15% interest for the 48 months. So my interest is 0.15 that I have to divide by 12 months. And my period is 48 months with the negative exponent. This calculation now removed all the interest that she accumulated in the last four years. And that means it gives us the value of the account at two years after two years of interest. And now we still need to take away the interest that accumulated in the first two years. And this we do by multiplying another bracket for the first two years worth of interest of 16% quarterly. And that means that was for eight quarters, once again with the negative exponent. Once again, it now helps if you can put all of this into your calculator at once. And if you do that, you will find that the original invested amount was 8,050 Rand and 11 cents. So today we saw that when there's a change in interest rates, each new interest rate simply forms a new bracket that has to be multiplied to the previous value. When I move forward on my timeline, the exponent will always be positive, And when I move backwards on my timeline, the exponent is negative.